I've got a few scripture readings to share with you today. The first one is a really good memory verse, and this one comes from John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. And this little saying, this little verse, or a couple of verses, just kind of pops up in the middle of John's gospel. But oh, what wonderful words. John 7, 37. On the first, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now we're going to turn over to the book of Romans. In Romans, I'm just going to read you two verses from Romans chapter 12. These are the words of Paul from Romans 12, and it's verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, and that is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And then this reading from John's vision of the heavenly throne room in the book of Revelation. This is from Revelation chapter 7, and I'll start reading verse, with verse 9, reading 9 through 17. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power might be to our God forever and ever. Now one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these? clothed in white robes, and whence have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night within his temple, and he who sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of living water. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I found an old Bible last week. Kathy picked it up for me 
over in Rocky Mount, and it's remarkable, it's big, and I want to share it with you today because it has a story behind it. It's a big thing. Let me lift it out of here. It's a big, old church Bible. Monstrous thing. It is heavy. We're not going to pass it around. Okay? Uh, it, it's a little bit heavy for that. But I am going to set it down here. I'm going to use this lectern. And I want to tell you about what kind of Bible this is. Because if it could speak to us and tell us of its journey, of where it was, where it came from, what it has seen, and all that has transpired. You see, back, th this dates to about 1870. So what does that make it? About 150 years old. Is that right? That's right, 150 years old. And it is filled with reference material. It has bound in with the scripture a complete biblical encyclopedia, a dictionary, a concordance, maps, historic charts, and everything you need to interpret the story of the gospel. Because at the time it was issued, there were places where the people didn't have churches to go to. This is one of those places. Elders from larger churches would come down and they'd bring one of these with them. And they would use it to generate a Sunday school lesson for all the children, different ages. That's why it's got the dictionary and why it's got the maps and all the pictures in it of all the Bible stories so they can share it with the children. Happened right here. Now, I don't know what church this came from or whose it was because I can't find within it any note indicating where it was inscribed or where it was used, but this was a church Bible from the late 1800s. See, it started, I'll just use the example of down here and what they called Runnymede. You had some mills down here. And you had some folks work in those mills, and they didn't have a church. And an elder came down, in our case, it was from Howard, right up on the other side of the tracks. An elder came down and would have brought one of these right here and would have used it not only to teach Sunday school, but to do Bible study and conduct whatever services of worship would be necessary for the people who lived in that place. And they not only did it right here, they did it out at Leggett, and they did it up at Nahela, they did it at Johnson up near Speed, they did it at little country places all over this land, like Grace Chapel and Pine Tops and all over, wherever it was necessary. And they weren't just Presbyterians. There were Baptists and they were Methodists. We don't know which denomination used this. Now I thought about it when I read the scripture from Revelation where John saw a vision of the heavenly throne room and all the people who had responded to the word. There they were. And John says, who are these people? And, and, and the answer comes back, these are those who have escaped, who have left the great 
tribulation. They've come out of the great tribulation. Now, what I want you to think about, if you could imagine if this thing could speak, think about the services it was at. Think about the weddings that it witnessed. Think about the baptisms of the little children. Or even if they were Baptist baptisms, getting all those people getting dunked in the water. Think about the funerals and the, and the bereaved gathering. Think about the people who sat and listened to the services and the troubles that they faced. It is so good to think about that because we get stuck in our own thing today. You know, <clears throat> our troubles today, <clears throat> our troubles are so bad, and we got so many problems and such issues that we got to deal with, and we get all jumbled up in it and all stuck to it, and it helps so much to know that just as the Holy Spirit got them through it back then, God will get us through it today. To find and to know the blessings of the Lord. So, I, I like that passage that where it says that these are the ones, he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. Whenever you got trouble, any kind of trouble, trouble of body, trouble of mind, trouble of spirit, financial trouble, relationship trouble, family trouble, health trouble, whatever it is. Just think of all those who come out of the great tribulation. Here we are in the middle of it. Praise God. And the key to getting through the great tribulation, and it's different every year for everybody in every place, my great tribulation and your great tribulation might be different. I'll promise you mine's more severe because in mine, you know, your own troubles are always the greatest troubles anybody faces. But here we are in the great tribulation. But we are also in the great thanksgiving, the great celebration of the great blessings that are around us in every moment. And the great tribulation and the great blessings all come together at that fountain of living water. All of the blessings to, for all of the troubles and all the celebrations all come together if we could just keep our hearts and minds focused on that, all that we got to deal with would go so much better. And we would hold that perspective in our hearts so much better. Paul gives us a really good message here about it. I love this part where Paul says, I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Present your, when he says that, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, he's saying, come to God, all of you, with all that you are. All that you are. Everything. All the troubles, all the failures, all the sins, all the mess, whatever it is that we might be in the middle of, just bring it to the Lord as a single, blessed, holy sacrifice. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good, 
and acceptable and perfect, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, when we're conformed to this world, being conformed to this world, what that means is that we are attached to the good stuff, wanting the good stuff, and striving for the good stuff, and we also want to avoid the bad stuff. So conform to this world, curse the curses, and, and stay away from them, and run from them, and deny them, and, and somehow flee away from whatever the bad is and go toward the good, and, and so we have this rat race of us running from what we don't like to try to get to what we like. And that pretty well governs pretty much everybody pretty much all the time. Get rid of what's bad, go for what's good. Get rid of what's bad, go for what's good. And struggle and struggle. And that's the tribulation. The tribulation is always a mixture, you see, of the blessings and the curses. But what God has for us is an amazing unity, a wholeness, a completion, that it all fits together in the blessings that God has for us. So, God, so Paul says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So the worship, the services, the celebrations, the blessings, the marriages, the baptisms, the funerals, all of it, that's your spiritual worship. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't be stuck in, 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 the, in, in, in all just wanting the good and wanting to get away from the bad. Don't be conformed. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Think about it a little bit differently. Gain some perspective that you can prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, in the reading from Revelation, just to go back there for just a second, the, 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 the seal and guarantee of the blessings in the ultimate destination is in verse 17, the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of living water. To springs of living water. You see, as people experienced whatever they went through over all the time that they have lived, the ultimate destination is a spring of living water. And that's what Jesus talks about in John chapter 7. And, and it's a mysterious scripture because it really does just kind of pop up in the middle of everything. There really isn't a lot of context. It just says, on the last day of the feast. Doesn't even say what the feast was. It just says on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Now thirst, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Thirst is our inner desire that whatever we're going through, that we would find the, the, the real meaning of, of it all, that we would find the fulfillment of God's word right in the middle of what we're dealing with. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Whoever believes in Jesus, the great I am, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, whoever believes and accepts the promises of Scripture, whoever takes the fulfillment of that into their hearts, will become themselves a fountain of living water. 
And I think of the people who sat in the pews in the 1880s and 1890s and 1900s, 1910 and 1920 and 1930, probably up through the 50s. I don't know when that thing left the church where it was. The church might have closed. I don't know what the story was. But I do know that as they heard the words and let the words settle in their hearts and in their minds and accepted them, that they themselves became the fountain of living water. They became that fountain of blessing, of living water to all those who were around them. And so shall we, the people of God, here in 2023 in this mixed up, wild, and crazy world in which we're living today, we also will follow them, and we're all going, we're all going to the same place by the blessings of Jesus Christ. Amen.